Are you ready to me? <laughs> <laughs> Just to hijack everything. All right. <laughs> Today I'm here with Lucy Rebel from the residence and we are in her wardrobe and I have to say your bedroom smells beautiful. Thank you so much. It's one of uh, my candles that I have burning. I think it's a Nesco from Sia Trudon. Um, I bought it, from, well, I got two actually on my birthday last year, so they've been burning for about six months, so it's almost time to get a new one, I think. Right. Oh, it's <laughs> so lovely. Just yum. Um, now, the residence, is it three years it's been going? Nearly three years, so um, uh, about, yeah, two and a half years now, and um, it's just such a fantastic thing to own, and I love that it's mine. And I love that it puts me in touch with these incredible like-minded people. And it just has been a vehicle for me to grow up and explore. And I've been on a journey through meeting others. It, you know, before I had it, I was, there was a time in my early 20s where I would be asking people to have coffee with me all the time because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was working as a lawyer and I didn't love what I was doing. And so... To sort of turn that into an online platform and share those conversations felt very, very natural and it's so fantastic because it has just been so popular and yeah, it's a... <laughs> 2,000 followers or...? Yeah, so I, I had a reach of 30,000 across the blog, right. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram um, and I just love that because my audience are, re I know it sounds a bit cheesy, but they are like my friends that I haven't yet met. And the other day I would put up something because I was grumpy because I put on some sunblock and it was kept running into my eye. And I was like, you know, what sunblock should I use? And I also got like 20 responses back with people suggesting different sunblock brands to me to use um, because they're so, they're so involved and they're just really cool women who are really intelligent and also really helpful and thoughtful. It's great. It's like your own commu online community, or your on, or your tribe, or your sisters, or your friends, or yeah. yeah. I really like it. I definitely think so. <laughs> <laughs> so does Timmy. <laughs> yes. So Timmy is here, my parents' dog, who often makes guest appearances on the residence, and as long as he maintains a civil level of volume, he can stay. <laughs> Be good, Timmy. Yes. Otherwise, we'll make you into a first doll. Hey, so tell me about your wardrobe. What um, what first struck me is this really beautiful Jackie O type jacket coat. Yes. So um, obviously vintage. Yeah, bring the whole thing out. It is a oh, matching, it's a dress and got a matching oh, dress. Realize. There's a oh. wonderful story behind the um, dress and the coat. Uh, so it was selected by the fashion editors mm. of Wellington Woman mm. magazine. Mm. And I liked it so much that I was persuaded by one of my own residents, Jay Glam Morgan, uh, to go to Hunters and Collectors and buy it after the, it had been given back to the shop because it was just on loan. And uh, it's completely raw silk. So and it's really heavy. Really so heavy. heavy. But very, very beautiful and high quality. And I'm so glad I kept it. And I'll be able to show you as like a cutaway or something the picture of it in the magazine in the shot because I've of course got like five copies of the yeah. magazine I was in last March. And have you worn it much? I Aside have. from the shirt? Well one funny thing was um, I wore it to my work Christmas party and um, the work team, the, uh, so I wore it because I loved it and I thought it was glamorous and fantastic and uh, as a joke one of the teams at work had bought for their boss an entirely pink suit, almost of the exact same shade with a pink tie and pink pants. Oh. It was like very cheap sort of internet, like, you know, from the internet. And um, so there's some funny photos of us standing together looking like an 80s husband and wife <laughs> um, because we're both wearing the same shade of pink. Like um, a twin set, like you've gone out and matching up. Yeah, yeah, so it's very funny. I like. can't believe how heavy that is. Like, I couldn't yeah. hold that for very long. But it fits me too. Like, I love how it fits on me, and I just think that the tailoring. And you didn't have to have it all no. to it was just perfect. Nice. Cresta. Yes, and I think there's an interesting story behind Cresta, but of course I can't remember what the right. interesting story <laughs> is at all. Um... And your wardrobe, when I look at it, you've got really pretty colours and a range of sort of 
um, stripes and different prints, but your wardrobe is is very contained. My wardrobe is small, so our house is um, like many houses in Wellington are, up against a bank, a big hill. Um, so we get light and sun in the front room, but we get very little light and sun in the back. So it's up to us to keep the house in a livable condition. And um, there's a few ways that we do this. The first summer, well, the first winter, this, we've been here for about two years now, um, but the first year we were here, my wardrobe got completely infested with mold. And that was terribly devastating because I had to take all the dresses out. I had to brush them down. I tried to mop them down, but I didn't know if that worked or not. I was just a bit clueless about it. And so from now on, you know, we've got two dehumidifiers in the house and I have a big container of damp rid down the bottom, which is almost, an, oh, it's almost entirely gone. Um, like even in summer, we, because there's no way for the house to really naturally kind of ventilate, we just yeah. have to run the dehumidifier. Um, but it's worth it to keep the clothes um, in good condition. Dry and, yeah, and I've got yeah. my, my plastic boxes as well for my shoes to contain things in, and that way I can see them. Mm. Um, so, yeah, just trying so to. So, you haven't got. So, order. you've got your summer clothes here, so your winter clothes you have. Yes. Elsewhere. So my so winter clothes, um, yeah, so I started doing a bit of wardrobe rotation um, mainly because I wasn't wanting to follow directly sort of something like caps your wardrobe, but I, which sounds like a lot, it's a lot of effort, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I was um, quite inspired by Eleanor Ozick's book, The Art of Simple, um, which talks about reducing your wardrobe. And then again, uh, a blogger from the UK, the Anna Edit, talking about her capsule wardrobe. So while I didn't want to follow it directly, it made sense to rotate clothes out, especially because we had a hallway cupboard that was being underused. So <clears throat> while it was so hot this summer, it was totally worthwhile getting rid of some of the things that were not being as well used and making sure that everything in here was something I wanted to wear every day. And you know, I could see. So doing a great big wardrobe clear out around the same time, donating a lot of those clothes to Recycle Petite really helped now because I can go and see what's in my wardrobe and every piece is wearable in my everyday life. There isn't anything in there that I wouldn't really wear. Yeah, right. It's really good. Yeah, I have, I have a bit of a... I don't know what I think of that capsule model. It's kind of a bit too prescriptive and a bit too uniformly and a bit. And when you travel for work, you have a capsule wardrobe anyway. There's, there's, there's something I always think about that. Like, I, I think it's fantastic. I'm, I, I love being neat and orderly and tidy, but I do think when things get too prescriptive or cult-like, I wonder if it's a regression kind of back to the 1950s where we, you know, women were kind of occupied by trivial things to clean and keep the house tidy so I think if you overthink stuff like cleaning out your wardrobe um, or making your own household cleaning products I'm like maybe you just need <laughs> something a little bit better to do with your time I don't know I mean that might be being you know I think everybody has their own thing and having said that I took all my jars the other week and used my home making label maker to decant all my medicine and uh, face wiping pads and things into jars so they looked neat. So I think the thing oh, we all, I've done it here. Yeah. So, so having said that, I think, you know, there's sort of, there's a, I think it's important to have things that make you feel happy and organized in life. But I think if it starts to become stressful and you're living by artificial rules that aren't necessarily helpful, then, you know, it's important to be mindful of just bending those rules or maybe yeah, doing yeah. something else that's more fun. Yeah. And when I looked at this, the front of your wardrobe, you've got this beautiful, this beautiful print. So that dress um, is very special because I've worn it many times, but um, my most memorable time would have to be when I received an absolutely positively Wellingtonian award from the mayor. Wow. And there's a lovely photo of me and Justin Lester and Paul Eagle and the dress just looks really nice in yeah. the middle. Which is and you awesome. got it from... Oh, the, That's so nice. So do you wear it, the, the, 
the back at the front as well? Can you wear it both ways? You can wear it both ways. I just tend to wear it with this at the back and then I um, either belt it around the centre or if I'm just feeling like I'm having a fat day, I just leave it hanging. Um, but it looks nice both ways. Because it's, it's Dries Van Notion, who's one of my favourite, favourite designers from Belgium. And, well, favourite designers, full stop. I was so fascinated. I saw his documentary last year about how the fabrics are made. And so for me, I was just really, made me appreciate the work that's gone into this dress and to make that beautiful print. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And how he puts so much thought into everything he does like when he went out and picked flowers from his garden and the placement of those flowers around his house and how um visually acutely tuned he is mm. yeah it was an amazing documentary so you, but you've got more than one dress thing i i do yes i've also got this one which needs a press so i do i do apologize um but this one i got for 120 dollars at scotty's and it was a size too big for me and i took it to top line tailor and um they fitted it they they actually pulled up the um shoulders was how they sort of fitted it better Ooh. um and that was quite a few years ago now but i still love it i think it's a really beautiful timeless print and um the hem length is something i wear a lot less now i have in my recent recycle boutique um cull I got rid of a few dresses with shorter hemlines. I've never really been one for short hemlines. I think when I was about uh, 17, I really liked the singer Lily Allen, and she had this really cool style with like ball gowns with sneakers. Yeah. But she always wore sort of a three quarter length or like kind of just to her knees. Yeah. Um, never really wore mini dresses. I've always been really influenced by that look and the kind of love that I think. You know, you know, I just don't think you should have to wear something if you don't feel comfortable with it necessarily because it's a trend because I think there's so many different style icons that you can look at and I think it's really important to be original. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And not just, yeah, as you say, not just wearing something because it's current, wearing something because you feel really good in it, looks great on you and, yeah, you don't, just because everyone else is wearing short shorts doesn't mean... Yes, I did actually go to Hurricane Jennings and try and buy some short shorts the other, at the start of summer and I just had to admit to myself that short shorts are not something for me. <laughs> I'm well past the age of short shorts. So you're in here you've got a really good mix of um, so design. What I really like is your approach because you've got designer pieces, really beautiful pieces. You've got New Zealand design pieces. It's quite a little world herringbone and um what else can we see? Oh Scottings. Um Mark Jacobs. Yeah that's from workshop. Yeah. So you've got um you've got high it, it doesn't look like a fast tune through wardrobe. No, so like this dress here is from my twenty first. Um, and that was the Karen Walker collection that was inspired by the sound of music. And it's just got this beautiful detail. Oh my gosh, like the curtains and the... Yeah, and it's got this lovely detail, detail sort of on the front. And um, I just think, you know, um, I can't remember if this was before she started making them in China or, may, or maybe um, not long after, but like... That's unusual. The little Can hole, I yeah. Attach the... It's sort of held with um, and threads, but I think if we look in the lining somewhere, is that, oh look, you might get some real life, no, that's not mould, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but real life experience of the mould. Yes, yeah, so so this is made sketch. in China, and it, but it's, it's, it's great fabric though, it's 20% silk and 80% linen. Um, but I do feel like I look at some New Zealand makers now not all of them and i think i looked at the latest karen walker collection and i was really disappointed by the fabrics i um, just saw it in david jones the other day and i just didn't think that for the price tag they really offered up much um because it felt very flimsy but like really recycled ideas and like the 945 dollar coat wasn't even lined and it was a polyester so like yeah. i mean that's why I think it's worth holding on to beautiful pieces you might have from New Zealand designers because some people stay fantastic and other people 
maybe don't over the years, but the pieces when people really, you know, made a lot of effort sometimes are worth hanging on to. Yeah, especially the ones made of lovely fabric because with that fast fashion model, the the rate of production and the fibre that they start with together and, and the quality of the weave all affect how long that piece of fabric will last and the quality of it. Yeah. And with higher quality fabrics, you often have a, a much closer weave. Um, they'll sit really square, you'll find, with um, often with fast fashion, because it's a looser weave, then the fabric won't sit straight. So any mm. garment that's cut from it is always a bit yep. kind of off. So, um, yeah. So in here, oh, look at the line on that. Yeah. So I mean, here in bone on the outside, and then this really, really delicious rose lining. And it somehow seems to always go with something that is so outrageous. It's like, it's like kind of having a pair of yellow shoes, you know, they just, they're so, seem nutty, but just kind of, work yeah. yeah so what will prompt you to buy something um a pattern being attracted to something um i've recently um saved a picture of some shoes actually on instagram which i'm starting to do i'm starting myself to take the lead from the, those i follow and, and save their outfits but supret has this pair of leopard print kitten heels with like a swing back and a bow at the back and I'm a bit you know I kind of thought I quite like something like prepared for a while but um I do think they seem like quite a cute timeless item to have uh not sure whether I will buy them but that was the most recent time I've been prompted to look at buying something yeah that was last night and much online or mostly in store how do you so um I would say I'm a real impulse shopper but not in a not not in the sort of the sense that I'm always constantly buying, but like I tend to buy things if I see something and it looks really good. And even if there's no occasion to wear it for yet, I think it's just really important to buy something if you think it is something you really love. Uh, so when I was 17 or 18, I got a beautiful Zambezi jumpsuit. <clears throat> I think I had to get mum to help me out a little bit, but um, it was just a beautiful, beautiful make that was there available the one one of the things I you know and I, I've worked for so many years afterwards I think it's their house now um uh but you know there's one dress from workshop I always regret that we didn't buy <clears throat> and it was and, a and you still think about it I still think about it and how, this, how much longer later oh god it would be like I would have been still in university so I'm <clears throat> out of work working now six years so it would have been about sort of eight years ago but it was like a Mark Jacobs dress with a zip right down the back and I think the only reason we didn't one of the well we didn't get it because it's expensive and we didn't get it because it was one of those dresses that you needed to be a little bit on the trimmer side to wear so because it fitted quite firmly but I still regret getting not getting it because uh, it was just a really beautiful piece so yeah. I, amazing that six years eight years later yeah you still think about that mm, yeah only I had I know <laughs> I know but like I mean that's the thing is that um you know, there's so much in here that is, so, you know, are things that I have kept for that long and I still love to wear. Um, something else I really love is this Koto jumpsuit, which is... Oh, look how low the crotch is. It's really, it's really oh. great. I really love Koto and I'd like to buy more things from them, um, particularly because they have an awesome uh, story and they are an ethical fashion brand, which is fantastic. Do you, um, do you listen to the wardrobe crisis podcast i don't know so that's claire press who's the sustainability editor for vogue australia mm -hmm. and she does a podcast called wardrobe crisis and gosha is that gosha from um koto is on the latest podcast oh fantastic it's a really really good podcast i'll go check it out um when you're talking about um having a really fitted garment um the designer that I really like is Miss Crab. Oh, because she's because there's always kind of room in her garments for a little bit of weight change. Yeah, well, I mean, I have the summertime dress here in charcoal, which I think about you know a fifth of New Zealand girls probably own. Um, but that's a great case, you know, example because it's just a simple wrap round, um, as we know from Diane von Forstenberg. The wraparound dress yeah, is yeah. always a classic. 
Um, yeah, and then it doesn't matter if you put on a couple of kilos or, you know, it's always accommodating rather than putting in, putting on something that's more structured and you know, like a holy Yes, holy yeah. <laughs> hold yeah. And that's, that's why I love Miss Crab because you can wear it, you know, you could even change in a couple of dress sizes mm. and it's still wearable. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, she's great. Um, I can show you something that's quite cute as well. Um, because as a blogger, I sometimes get sent things. And I, oh, actually, I just bring, I wanted to talk about this in a second as well. Um, but I just got sent some earrings, uh, which I haven't even completely opened from an awesome brand online. And I will find out who they are. Um, Nikki sent them to me from Indie and Wild. And... These are oh wow gorgeous gorgeous oh, pair that aren't they fabulous? I'm hoping I'll get a chance to wear. I think that I just need to possibly glue that back on there or something. But oh, some you know, there's so many wonderful things I think you can find now through both Instagram and things, you know, locally. I think it's a great thing for smaller brands who want to be noticed or reach out to people they like online and I really think it's great in that sense. It really helps. Yeah. They're beautiful. Thank you. So, um, Bone Style Club. Yes. So, um, they're Wellington, aren't they? They are. Um, I really like them because they, um, <clears throat> they mainly use organic fabrics, organic cotton tees are their specialty. But this beautiful woolen dress was something that I knew I would wear forever because it's just a great colour, it's a yeah, perfect winter. Yeah, the navy would look beautiful. Like, I pulled this out of the wardrobe for my winter wardrobe stuff because um, obviously it's too hot to wear at the moment still, but I think if you have a lovely piece of merino, something like this, um, I think it would have been just under $200, but I mean, cost per wear over the time, I'll be wearing that when I've got kids and stuff as well because it's just so relaxed and... Um, it's lovely as well to support people who are small and maybe don't follow the fast trend turnaround. I think that this came out in like July last year, which was well into winter, but it's so timeless it doesn't really but matter. You, you know, it's because we're in the middle of um, middle of we're almost in autumn. You know, wearing in a merino because it's um, you can wear it. In the in the seasons, as you switch in, kind of into winter and out of winter, but also wearing it without you know bare legged, and then you just add a layer under it and add a pair of tights under it for winter. Totally, and it's great. I love merino. I wear so much, but I had a merino skirt on yesterday, and even though it was twenty, how hot was it? Twenty something degrees. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, it was absolutely fine because it breathes. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk to these guys. Yeah, they're, they're on my list. So watch out, Bone Star Club. <laughs> um, I've got two accessories I just wanted to quickly talk about. One yeah. was this lovely scarf from Kept Limited, which is um, Wellington sort of Christchurch company. It's 100% cashmere and it is made overseas, but with really oh. traditional brand, uh, companies. So I think it is made in want to say Bavaria but I think it's made yeah it's made in Germany um beautiful gosh it feels fantastic yes and um the owners of the company have this real commitment to looking after the manufacturers who have a history of producing high quality garments and that's who they've chosen to partner with so I think I really I've, uh, I really kind of take a philosophy where I don't think everybody is going to be doing the same thing when it comes to making better decisions around fashion um, choices and manufacturing. But I do think that we can we can pick different people who we really like and admire, and maybe not everything's made in New Zealand, or maybe not everything is really like sourced through to the fabric but it's you know maybe it is made in New Zealand and I think m kind of going for a mix of things is the way forward generally and to sort of avoid buying fast fashion altogether if you can. Mm. What, I'm, what I'm hearing in conversations now and I imagine this would fit perfectly into this category is um, 
a piece for life. Mm. So that you'd, you'd buy something and then you would keep it for your lifetime. And a piece like this beautiful piece of cashmere is something that you would totally well, keep for life. I've just finished watching the documentary about Selfridges and a hundred years ago you couldn't buy ready to wear clothes. You had to buy something that was bespoke and it was only with the advent of the 1920s and shorter hemlines that you began to be able to buy things off the peg as it were. So um, we forget that it used to be so expensive to own clothes that women only had three or four dresses at mm. all and um, they were often made bespoke for them. And then they just do little things like change the lace collar on them or change little details on them or change the trims on the bottom of them. Yes. And yeah. So um, that's the scarf from Kept. And the final thing I just want to quickly mention because I think it is quite unique is the pair of shoes that I made for myself last oh, year. Oh wow, gorgeous colour. I need, definitely need to buy some super glue across the board because um, they unfortunately starting to pull away a little bit because they are just glued. To, so this whole shoe is glued together. There's no stitching involved. Yeah. And um, I was shown some patterns by the. Oh, owner did you do it in the workshop? Yeah. Oh, so right. I made it over two days. And the owner of Shoe School showed me a couple of the designs she thought would be nice and then mentioned this fabric. And I really worked very hard to do less is more and not go over the top and add like flowers and, you know, because you've got all these crazy letters and, you know, I just wanted something really minimalist, something I would really wear. And then I thought about pairing it with my favourite dress from Wilson Trelope and how that kind oh, of sweet. classic look yeah. kind of take me through a few different seasons yeah. but um yeah these are fantastic and if you have a chance to do shoe school in Newtown with Lou I highly recommend it. I've been looking at it and um oh look at that little detail on them and I really want to do it it looks oh that's such a pretty colour it is really gorgeous so it's, did you find it difficult um, I didn't, I think it's, it's quite a time consuming thing. Um, yeah. so you, to do a whole pair of shoes takes five days. Right. These took two days, but, um, uh, I think that the thing is sometimes things can go wrong. You don't expect can go wrong. Like you might have your, your outer, your inner and your outer be the same size, but then that doesn't work. So you have to trim one down. Things, little things like that can go wrong all the time, but they're pretty, they're pretty good. And they just kind of rip things off and like, Whole, you know, trim around the edges. So, um, yeah, Lo and Gemma, who were at the workshop, were really helpful and helped kind of. Do you love them more because you make them? I do, except there's only one really negative thing, and that is the fact that they actually have um, where the leather cuts there that's on the front of my big toe, and so if I'm not careful, I can get a little blister there. So, I do have to be careful that when I wear them, um, if they start to hurt, I take them off so you can make shoes bespoke these are bespoke for my feet and my feet alone and still you know feet are such a unique thing that you can get have it at the points. angles where it will rub yeah. on the front but I love wearing them I think they're such a cute style and um, I'm very much going to take care of them yeah gorgeous really lovely I don't know how you place them oh, yeah, pretty, pretty relaxed <laughs> Very good. Hey, well, thank you for leading us inside your wardrobe and discussing with us how your approach, um, what you wear, and what I love is that mix, that mix of, of really high-end, beautiful pieces, New Zealand-made pieces, and steering away from those kind of cheaper, low-quality goods, and really curating what you do. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>